Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review we are looking at the Soap Studio 112th scale action figure The Flash from season 1 which is... it's something I wasn't planning on reviewing but uh, the people in charge of Soap know the people in charge of Storm and I know the people from Storm so they connected me and said hey do you want to review this and I said sure I know a lot of you guys like these clothed action figures even though it's not my personal cup of tea I don't remind I don't mind reviewing them for you and I know a lot of people are really into the CW shows even though I've kind of fallen out of out of love with them but uh, whatever it's not up to it's not it doesn't matter to the review what I personally like, it only matters what's actually objectively good or not. So that's what I'm here to show you. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. And this guy stands just about almost exactly six and a half inches tall, which makes him just about 16 and a half centimeters. That's probably slightly oversized. I don't think Grant Gustin is 6'5". I'm um, thinking maybe closer to six foot, like 6'1", but I'm just guessing. Anyway, pretty much every 112 scale figure is slightly oversized, so I guess that, I guess that's what we're doing now, and that's okay. If this is going to line up perfectly with just about any of your uh, 112 scale figures like Marvel Legends or DCUC or any of those other varieties, so that's that's a good thing. Uh, now, like I said, I'm not into the cloth stuff personally, but uh, I know a lot of you guys are into the Mezco line and probably this kind of thing. And the, the, one of the important things about getting a figure like this. To look good is to have the cloth to be to scale. Now you don't see any like traditional cloth on this guy, so that makes it a lot easier for him to not look like he's wearing a giant sweater. His um, the cloth-like material is not like traditional. It's kind of got like this weird texture on it, and then we have like pleather, so it's a lot easier for it to look good. And I think that's a good thing. You can see there is a lot of detailing throughout, lots of different patterns and things, like you can see on the elbows here or the lightning and the, some more pattern around the butt. It's it's pretty well executed. I'm I'm if I was into this kind of thing, I'd be very pleased with it. Um, it's just not my cup of tea, but it is good for what it is. It, it looks, as far as I can tell, like the same level of quality as the Mezco stuff. I have re reviewed a few of those, and this seems to be about the same. I will point out the figure itself is much thinner underneath than the Mezco figures, which is a nice thing because once you put the clothes on top, it ends up bulking them out a whole lot, and this looks basically exactly like it's supposed to. Of course we have some weird issues where the shoulders are a little bit too big and, and noticeable because we have to have the articulation and that kind of thing. But overall, that looks a lot like, like if you squint, you could definitely think that that was a real person. Obviously you know it's too little, but you get what I'm saying. It's not like weirdly proportioned or bulky or anything. So I definitely appreciate that. It's one of the things that keeps me away from this type of figure more often than not. Another good thing about this figure is the head sculpt is, it's pretty accurate. It's not like 100% perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I mean, that does look like Grant Gustin in the in the cowl. And the paint works pretty clean, so I'm happy with it. All right, let's talk accessories. Speaking of Grant Gustin, we do have an alternate head without the cowl, which, again, looks really good. It's surprisingly well done. The paint job's good. The sculpt is good. The hair is a separate piece. Could use a little bit of shading in the hair, though. And then for that head, we do have a down cowl, which just has a hole in it so you can peg, it, peg the head in over that. And it hangs off the back nicely. It's very well executed. We have a few different hands. We have the two relaxed hands that come on them in the package. Two fist hands. Two running or karate chop hands. And then one hand for him to like touch the ground like he's going to take off. We have four lightning bolt accessories which can just kind of like go around his shoulders or his legs or wherever you want to put them. So that's really cool. And then we have a nice little display stand with an upright to hold them in place if you want to just display them like that. And that's pretty nicely executed as well. Now as far as the articulation goes, there's a ball peg for the head and it's actually at the bottom of the neck, which is a nice feature. I definitely like when lines do that. I know you can't always have that, like um, for instance the line I'm working on, it just doesn't work to have the neck connected to the head. But for this kind of thing, it's fantastic. I love it because you get the, it kind of continues the sculpt a lot better than having the neck always facing forward. But I like it. So you get decent range forward and back. Uh, leaning side to side is fine. You saw the rotation of course. Very, very nicely executed. For the shoulders, it's just like your standard SH figure. It's, there's a ball peg that connects the shoulder. Now, this is all based on what I can tell through the clothing. I don't know 100% for sure. But as far as I can tell, there's a ball peg connecting the arm to the body, which lets it rotate like that. And then you have your ball hinge, which works no problem at all. Really good range. Rotating it forward is not too bad. You do kind of have to you know, deal with the cloth as you always have to with this kind of thing but it works I mean you can do it it bunches up a little bit but it works 
then you have your bicep swivel in there. You have a double jointed elbow, which has really good range, very nicely executed. And then for the wrist, I think it's just a single ball peg, like a straight peg, yeah. Just your standard ball peg in there, but it gives you a little bit of range. You know, it's not a ton, it's mostly just gonna be a swivel. For the torso, I think it's just a regular ball peg in here because you can lean it all the way around. This is just from the upper torso, like right where my thumb is. Pretty good range all the way, no real issues there. And it's funny too because obviously at this scale the clothes do look kind of baggy and bunched up, but this is pretty much what he looks like in the show because his clothes are always kind of baggy and bunched up like that. So that's pretty nice for the upper torso. For the lower torso, another ball peg. Again, really good range overall, very pleased with this. I think a lot of people are going to be really into this line. I think so. I'm, I, I'm guessing. Uh, for the hips now, we do have a bit of an issue. Going out to the side, this is about it because it just wants to it wants to pull it back. So I guess it's a little more than what I said. But if you do them both at the same time, you can't really do it because the pants are just too tight at the crotch. So that is definitely limiting. But going forward not too bad. You can bring the leg up basically all the way. Going back, you can't go very far because there is a butt cheek sculpted in. Uh, it's it goes back a little bit and then the rest is going to be in the knee which I guess I'll do I don't know that's probably how it is for real life too I never really paid that much attention to how much you can bring your legs back if you're not like a gymnast or something but I guess that'll do I mean you could definitely get him in a running pose I think that'll be just fine so you have that you do have a thigh swivel in there which will be helpful for some poses of course double jointed knees be careful though it does stretch the material but it doesn't seem to keep the color. Like the color of stretching, it, tur it turns kind of whitish, but then it goes away. So if you actually, you can kind of avoid it anyway. But anyway, you guys are under understand that this is going to be the result of any kind of figure that has this kind of material. But you do get a really nice range out of the knee. The boot is a floating piece, which is nice. That means when the cloth pulls up at the bottom, you can still hide the joint, which is just a ball peg for the ankle, which doesn't give you the best range, but it gives you some and then side to side a little bit, and then of course rotation. It's definitely a little bit looser than I would like. The toe hinge also works, but again a little bit looser than I would like. So it's not a perfect figure, but it's pretty darn good, and if I was into the clothing stuff and really into the, like the CW shows, I would definitely get this. The accuracy and the overall look, I like it. Um, definitely some issues, which are the same issues I have with just about every clothed figure, which is you know the material stretches and bunches and gets in the way and all that kind of stuff. But if you're okay with all of that kind of stuff, then I think you're going to like these figures pretty much. Um, they're, they're pretty solid. I like it. I would recommend it if you're into this sort of thing. And that'll do it. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I uh, do have videos up every single day, so you may want to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, we talk about video games, movies, TV shows, action figures. We do all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting. <laughs>